Willow Creek Springs presents Healthy Living with your host, Joe Grumbine. Hello and welcome back to the Healthy Living Podcast. I'm Joe Grumbine, your host, and I have with me two very special guests. And we have Cheryl and Haley Rose and we have an incredible story we're going to hear. And uh, this is something that is the first time I've had this conversation. And, and it's a really great one because I've been working with people in this whole situation for almost 40 years. And it's great. Most people, a lot of people are afraid to share their stories or they just, you know, it's, it's still such a stigma attached to um, alternative medicines of all kinds. And and that's one of the reasons we do this show, because I really want to be able to share all the different things that can work. And uh, Cheryl and Haley, welcome. I'm so glad you guys are here. We've been actually coordinating this for a few weeks, and we finally got it all together. So yeah, thank you. Thank you for having us, Joe. Oh, you're very, very welcome. It's my uh, it's my treat. I'm thankful to Devin for uh, finding you guys and 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 scheduling it out. So, um, why don't you just briefly tell us a little bit about what brings you here and 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 tell your story? Well, um, Haley was uh, started medical care. She has Lennox Gastaut syndrome, which is a severe, rare form of epilepsy, childhood epilepsy. She's now thirty one. So no, I'm 31. Or all 31 <laughs> on the 11th of April. Yes. Good job. Almost 31. <laughs> so when did this begin? Like when did you when were when were, was the diagnosis or what 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 caused you to even think there was an issue? Like how did this all begin? Well, when she was a year old, um, and the doctors now believe that this is probably where it stems from. There are going to be some uh, gene tests and things like that for confirmation. Mm -hmm. But this is what they suspect now um, is that sometime after her MMR shot, just after that, she started having absence seizures. And it was actually misdiagnosed because she was so young. Mm -hmm. The pediatrician actually thought that she just had an attitude. And Ooh. yeah, yeah. And she was Great. like hyperventilating and absence seizures. And I'm like, this, I was a new mom. I, yeah, you know, I yeah. And there's no rule for, for being a new mom, you know, unless Dr. Spock counts, but you yeah. know. That... <laughs> so, so it was, it was so interesting. And he, I mean, obviously he didn't know any different. So right. he, he, it was, and because it didn't happen all the time, it, it just kind of, got set aside and kind of just ignored for for many years and then in kindergarten age she had the second one to it um and sometime around that then right around the the second shot of the MMR specifically uh she started having more seizures she had so I'm not for or against vaccines this is just yeah. the timeline that has happened right and, and, and it, Frankly, there's no way to know if if one thing has anything to do with the other, but but yeah, and it, it's something that they are is still investigating. Absolutely. So I I can I can talk about that. Oh, uh, look, trust me, you're in a good place to talk about these things. <laughs> so um, she started having more absence seizures in class, and like a lot more over that time, and also other types of seizures so um so six years old or in, in that that range yeah yeah and by the time between six and eight the they the neurologists were checking her out and stuff but they didn't they couldn't some of the stuff was not showing up some of it was <clears throat> they tried multiple medications they were not effective and so they thought well maybe it's not really epilepsy Right. And they took her off everything. And when they did that, she, it was about 2001. And I asked um, them about medical cannabis back then. Mm -hmm. And nobody like, mm -mm, 
they were more willing to talk about embryonic stem cells being transplanted into her brain than they were cannabis. And I was like, okay, wow. so this wasn't good. Yeah. I ended up, because they took her off the meds, no answers. I actually came to the States. Okay. Um, we were down in Sacramento uh, and I went, went to the States looking for options, looking for doctors that might be willing to look at it. Um, the States had much more going for it that I could find, right? right? It was available information for me to find. So I thought, we're going to go head that way. I didn't know where I was going either. So. Well, even at that stage of the game in California, like we didn't even pass our medical law till 96. So in 2001, it was still early times. I mean, I was at my stage of my career, <clears throat> I was doing extracts and experimenting, but we didn't know. I mean, you know, we the only thing we knew it was safe. We just knew yeah. it wasn't going to hurt you. And so because of that, we weren't afraid to try it. And we had to find willing people to be willing to try it. I you wish know? I had found you. <laughs> yeah, I, I wish I would have known you then. That would have been, you could have been part of all the experiments. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we would have been. I, that was the problem is I couldn't find anybody. And I had two other ch younger children, right? So the rules, the laws, it was illegal in Canada. Oh, yeah. Right? So um by the time he in january 6 2008 rolled around so seven years i tried to find doctors they did um when i was well sorry when we were in california uh -huh. um, the seizures came back and she had 40 grand moles in 24 hours oh, plus like other types of seizures as well but uh -huh. it was those were like the most impactful and um we took her in the hospital. They put her on phenobarbital, the right. old, old drug, but they didn't know what else to do, right? So Right, right. At least it stops you. I'm like, you yeah. can't, <laughs> can't do anything. <laughs> exactly, right? Yes, a hallucinating drug? Eventually, yes, you did hallucinate on it. Years, yeah. years later. Yeah, it, we have I mean, some that's what they give to violent uh, 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 schizophrenics. I mean, that's, that's the thing that knocks out a moose. It'll take everybody out. Oh yeah, it it was it was rough. Um, and then we came back here, and I kept searching for a doctor, searching for anyone. No one would, so I just I I listened to them, right? I I listened to what the professionals had at that time for their knowledge, right? right? And cannabis was in nobody's radar, no. even though I was already like. When I went to the doctors about it, I was pulling up the papers that referred to epilepsy and things that I had found from years ago, right? And wasn't good enough. So then um, in 2008, uh, January 6, 2008, I was told that she had had her last Christmas. It wow. had just, yeah, and to forget school in September, just enjoy my time with her because every Caesar was taking a piece of her away from us. Wow. Like every season. It was bad. It was really heartbreaking. Bad. That's completely just devastating. It it was. It was. And in May, end of May, I took her down to the vapor lounge at uh cannabis headquarters downtown. And yeah, <laughs> I went to her and we got her um actually it ended up being uh Michelle Rainey strain Afghani bull rider. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that was the first medical cannabis Haley consumed. And she wow. vaporized it. And within seconds, everybody at the table was like, whoa. Yeah. Okay. Wow. The difference. They're like, what just happened? Yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh. And she's like, starts talking and everything. I saw. So for those of you who don't understand what she's just saying, I want to be really, really clear because cannabis medicine doesn't work everything for everybody some people don't get any relief even people with seizures <laughs> but when it does work it can be so dramatic it could be like a like like a miracle it could be like jesus just walked on over and touched you on the head oh yeah it. absolutely it, it was, was like crazy. she just began talking and conversing yeah. where she was unable and they actually uh it was mark and mark and jody had uh mentioned to me that um she, you're referring to they, thought, they thought she just right. had like um some uh, uh an autism to the point that she wasn't community like no eye contact no you know not talking nonverbal you know 
not able to communicate in that way. And all of a sudden she starts talking. Right. And she's <laughs> engaged, right? Wow. And they're like, whoa. <laughs> so it was quite shocking for all of us. Wow. And I was like, and well, Haley, do you remember stopping. that moment when that happened? Do you remember? Do you remember back then when you were when you first had your vaporizer at Mark and Jody's thing? Not really. Not really. Okay. So with her seizures, um, they come from all over her brain, right? And her memory is greatly affected. So she's not eligible for a lot of people who may have brain surgery. She's not, they were looking at, um, I believe it was the left temporal lobe, uh, but she has so, like from the, the permanent damage from the impact of so many seizures and on both sides. So there wasn't enough for her to keep retain a short-term and long-term memories properly. Well, and what people don't realize what happens in a seizure is like somebody it's like you have electrical wiring for a computer, which is your brain that's always sending signals. And it's like somebody comes in with a welder and just short yeah. a bunch of stuff. And you don't ever know what's going to happen. And your brain's really good at putting itself back together, but it can only do that so many times effectively. And then it starts to misfire. And that's that's unfortunately the the long term, you know. So when people are talking about seizures, man, it is no like if you've ever been with somebody having a seizure and you you listen I listen you know like I said I've been working with <clears throat> um you know moms who are are, are uh, transplants and going from one place to another to try to find and when they describe these seizures it's just gut-wrenching and I've experienced a couple of them with people that I've known and you just don't even know what to do it's like surreal and and that's once I mean I couldn't imagine going through this multiple times or like you said 40 times in a day i mean i couldn't even yeah and that was of the one type right right and she had um at the time she had multiple seizures so she had actually five different types of seizures wow. including subclinical seizures so ones that she the but doctors can the unknown seizures, ones that you can't see um mm -hmm. if it's there you and ones that you can't hear. Wow. Yeah, like there's no sound. So, it's hard, to, so it was hard uh, to tell um, if I was having a seizure or not. So we need to, uh, to get like some kind of watch to help to tell if it's if it's a real if the, the, that's a seizure in case it's a silent seizure or a non seeable seizure. Yeah, yeah, because so eventually we ended up being able to get an uh, Apple Watch to help oh. detect, watch um, blood ox, also heart rate. Okay. Because if she's having a seizure, her heart rate's going to change. Got it. So Some technology's not so it, bad. Yeah, like, you know, so those are fun, you know, yeah, you yeah. have no idea, right? Right. Wow. So, there, there was, that was a lot. Um, but the cannabis immediately made a night and day difference. Wow. It was 11 days apart that her doctor saw her. And within those 11 days, she had been on cannabis nine days. Wow. And on her strain, Haley's comment about four or five days. Wow. And he wow. couldn't believe it was her. Do you remember what you, what you were doing? The board thing. Um, when I went to see the doctor after um, the cannabis, um, I was singing a song saying, I'm bored, I'm bored, I'm really, really bored. And before um, the cannabis, I wasn't saying much. Wow. Wow. That's why he was surprised. Yeah, he, yeah. Uh, wow. Do you remember what he told you? Do you remember what he said? Um, no. No. No, he, she's like, I'm bored, I'm bored, I'm really bored. And he's like, walks in the door and he opens the door because he could hear from outside the door. Yeah. And 11 days prior, we had been there and she was not, you know, she was off balance. Her gait was off. She was in her wheelchair yeah, so yeah. She, and, and everything not, not doing great. And here she is dancing around the room and he opens the door and he's smiling his head off and he's like, your brain is working, and he's like, "What did you do?" And I'm like, "Oh, 
Did well, you know what's really class? interesting? It's like when people have brain issues, I had a massive brain injury when I was a kid. I was in a coma for three days. And when I came out, I didn't know anything. I didn't know who I was. I mean, it was a crazy experience and slowly it came back. But when people have brain issues, there's an assumption that there's nothing working. And your brain has intake and output and you can receive information, process it, think about it and not be able to communicate it back. And people don't understand that you're in there. And I remember I had a dear friend who had brain cancer and, and, and before he passed away, he was really in a bad way and his whole body was you know, imploding on him. And I remember it was a Thanksgiving. He came over to my place and we shared a, one of our last meals together. And, and, and I remember he, he told me, he goes, I'm in here. Like he couldn't communicate, but he's like, I'm here. I'm here. I'm like, dude, don't even worry about it. We got you, you know, but that's the thing. Like people have to realize, like if somebody can't communicate, it doesn't mean that they can't understand and, and we have to be thoughtful and, and, and under, if we can, it can make all the difference in the world. Cause if somebody's treating you like you're not getting it, then all of a sudden you're being diminished and, and, you know, it, the humanity, it's like, where do you get it from? If somebody doesn't even think you're in there. So that's amazing to even just have that, that moment. That's like, Oh, wait a minute. It's not what we thought. Oh yeah, it, it was amazing. Um, sometimes when I forget, I one time forgot who my stepfather was. Okay. Yeah, it was bad. She could not remember his name. She knew it was her uh, sister's dad, but mm -hmm. could not remember his name. Wow. And just because of so many seizures. Right. It had to repair, right? Absolutely. <clears throat> Absolutely. And you know, frankly, you don't need seizures to have that kind of a problem. No, no. I don't have seizures and I, I forget stuff all the time. So <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's not that unusual, but man, that's, that's, that's unbelievable. You know, it's interesting. I, I just interviewed Mark Emery, I don't know, about a couple months ago. Um, and I had, we hadn't been in communication for 15 years or so, but, but uh, it was great to have a conversation with him. And then now all of a sudden, to talk to somebody who was affected by him and Jody, that's uh, really cool. It's sort of tying everything all together. Well, they connected us with uh, Michelle Rainey mm -hmm. and and Dr. Paul Warnby. And so we oh. worked with Dr. Paul Warnby right up until he passed away. Okay. So, um, and when he, so those results that we saw, the doctors went and they went, okay, we're gonna do an EG. There was marked improvement. At this time, Haley had just turned 15. So her her female cycles were starting to kick in. And she actually has severe, severe life-threatening catamenial seizures. So her fluctuations in her hormones actually try to kill her. They had to give her rectal formaldehyde three times, wow. you know, every other day in order to get the seizures to stop. It was so bad. So she's actually has to take um, certain supplements for that as well. And we ended up not being able to fully come off the pharmaceuticals because now the cannabis was getting rid of all the other seizures. Right. But now we had something hormonal that was triggering and it just keeping that gateway open. <clears throat> and people don't realize that the power that hormones have. I mean, these are chemicals that are so powerful. Like if anybody... <clears throat> has been around a lot of women in your life uh, and and you you know i mean i'm a father a grandfather and 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 a brother and i've had lots of women around me all my life and as soon as they hit that age and they start getting cranky you're like what the heck is wrong with you right and that's normal without any any uh, other factors and when you sit there and you go you realize these super powerful chemicals are, are being dropped into this super volatile environment of your brain that's already fragile. It's like throwing a bomb in there. And, and Oh, yeah. And no you know what's interesting is that um, <clears throat> there's a lot of, because these are childhood diseases, it's also seen in boys as boys hit puberty. 
because they have different hormonal issues. Oh, yeah. going on, <laughs> and crazy. they're and so they actually <laughs> can end up with an increase in seizures as well. I can and imagine. So it, it hits from all over different, yet still very powerful what our hormones in our body do. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, that's huge. And so I couldn't even imagine you'd start compounding this. That there's a there's a woman in uh, Colorado right now that that deals with uh, a, a really extreme case, and her daughter's just you know at that age now, and it just compounds everything. Just makes oh everything hugely crazy. because you've got to deal with all that. It's another it it you can't. It's really really hard to take care of, right? Yeah, They've yeah. Done so many different things with it. So because this condition, these seizures are um, lifelong deteriorate, like they're progressive, right? The condition is a progressive condition. So you end up with something works for a while. And because it's medication resistant, things throughout growth through, through just for growing, right? Um, and through changes that happen, these seizures are types that change over time as well. So you yeah. might have one form present more and then another form later on uh. presents more. Um, so through the years, you end up with, you do great for a while and then it's like, uh oh, you know, we got to relook at this and relook, and you're constantly relooking at it. And in 2018, we found out that after, you know, 10 years of cannabis medicine, they right. now she had, now had a pinpoint area of her brain instead of every where the seizures coming from, they were coming from one more specific area. Okay. So remember that when you were in there for like days and the doctor came in and he was so upset because nobody was clicking the button. <laughs> um, oh no. The only reason why they weren't clicking the button is because one, you couldn't see it at all. Oh and no. Two, um, you usually, I was, I was drawing um, a picture of the, um, one of those. Oh, so they couldn't video, see you as part of it. Um, um, tapes, um, the one that you put in the VCR, one of those, uh -huh. and they couldn't see or tell that I was having a seizure until wow. the doctor came in and he got mad. <laughs> wow. <laughs> He, he, here's the thing. He, it wasn't that he was so much mad. He was actually frustrated within himself because right. he's watching these videos of her right. and he's zooming in with their cameras, right? Because we're right. in a hospital specifically for this. Yeah. He's got the EG hooked up. The EG is showing him seizure activity right. and he's watching this and there is no visible, not anything wow. visible, nothing to staff, nothing there. And he's looking at Haley, he's going, how come you didn't hit the button? She's like, I didn't know. No one knew. And he's like, and then he goes, me either. And I'm like, oh, that's why you're so upset right now. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. No one can see this. It's so it's, simple. But it was really powerful that you actually were working with a doctor that was putting that much effort in. I, I most of the time we have, I have conversations with, with similar-ish situations. And the biggest problem is the doctors don't have time. They don't care. And or and it's not that they don't care. I mean, you know, you you got to be. It's not know, their focus. It, it you're not the most important thing in their life, and 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 when it's your child, you want them to be the most important thing in your life. And exactly, it's impossible to get that to happen. But when that doctor, even for that moment, can make this the most important thing, then that's great. I mean, that's that's when you have a chance, at least. Exactly, and so at that point, we went okay. She's she had nine seizures. Um, four of them were visible, but or sorry, five were visible, four were not. So now we have to look at something else because ones we cannot see at all, we have to get rid of those. Right. <laughs> yeah, we, we can't have her living hooked up to an EEG. That's right. Right, know. exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's right. not tenable. So, yeah. So we looked at um IVIG uh blood treatment where it's like 10,000 uh, donations of blood have to be made in order to make a treatment, something like that. It's crazy. It's uh, a crazy amount of donations per. Uh, um, but she didn't qualify. Now, so she did, a, there's a series of tests that they do. Um, the first test will tell them how effective it is. The second one will tell them, you know, 
okay, right? We kind of go down as to what the causes were and, and kind of, you know, they figure it out. Hers was that it would probably help her health-wise. And because when her body, she starts to get sick, before you even know symptoms, she starts having seizures. Okay. So for her, making sure her health is at maximum for for her is really important. She did not qualify because she has low IgA, which means she had a 50% chance of anaphylactic shock. Oh, no. From Yeah, from blood products. So I'm like, okay, well, oh. that's not happening. And oh. it's also a 68-hour infusion for <laughs> three weeks. Like did, it's, it, you were it's, talking earlier about the stem cell treatment. Did they end up doing anything with that? Um, okay, so what happened was I looked at Sir Ramachandra Stem Cell Institute in India, and mm -hmm. like I said, we're talking way, way back, right? So right, right. Um, at the time, our neurologist at BC Children's suggested against it, and the reason why was he had already had a patient who went and tried it, and at that time, the stem cells did not disperse evenly. So by effect they did do they did become what they touched however they became in a clump because they couldn't disperse them so uh, it ended up causing more issues right because now you've got that issue which didn't help the situation so that's why he was against it they just didn't have their methodology down yet i mean that was... no no and and he was like i don't know maybe 10 maybe 100 years who knows when they get that fixed but right. you know it's something to look at or later, whatever, right? <clears throat> and then I asked him right after that, I asked him about, I had the Canada's paperwork in my hand. <laughs> I asked him and oh. he wouldn't even touch the envelope. <laughs> wow. It was rough because, you oh. know, it, at that time it was so bad, right? I know, I know, I know. I, I, I... Yeah. But when I had the cannabis, um, <clears throat> after a while, now um, I might be going off one of my pills and... I forget it, which one. It would probably be Banzo. And one of the, and <coughs> since um, we weren't able before the cannabis to take off some of the pills, one of my pills I've been on for so long was one that makes your bones very delicate. Oh no. And she's, um, I have no bone in my jaw yeah she's got oh, very oh. limited so and so some of my teeth fall out yeah, yeah. she's she's those, them so she's had over 30 pharmaceutical drugs um one and a half times tried wow <laughs> sorry one sec yeah yeah no worries <laughs> okay um, so yeah, like they ran the gamut and then they started running the gamut again <clears throat> and because they, there was nothing else. So, and the thing is, I remember when I brought it up to my doctor, I'm like, Hey, her bones and this and that. And so, and then he reminded me of the conversation we had had many years before, which was, we're going to give her this drug. It could have issues later for her. But we want her to get to be it to be later, right? right. Like, that was the goal. It was like you <laughs> you are accepting that if we can keep her alive, this could be the, the outcome. Yeah, and we went, and that's a rough call because yeah. you know if you think if I don't do anything, we know what the outcome is going to be, and we don't want that outcome. And if I do something, it's just like the steroids they give people. The long term effects. Exactly. The long term effects are dangerous as hell. Exactly, exactly, and that's it, and it, it's an it's an impossible choice, you know. It's like, what what do you as a mother do? What do you as as a human being decide? I mean, you know, I know what I would do. I'd say, well, I guess I'll try it because I at least I have a chance to do something else and look but, for something else in the meantime. You know, like keep exactly. working on it. That's all you can do. Right? All you can do, right? Yeah, and um, so. What happened then was we, I went looking for the ketogenic diet. She had done it years back, right actually before cannabis, she had come off it. Uh, it is completely different than it was in 2008. Completely so this is different, different than diet. what everybody is doing today, trying to lose weight, going keto and paleo well, and all that. This is actually is totally different than, than that. It is a um, metabolic ketogenic diet, but her foods actually weigh to a hundredth of a gram. Whoa. 
yeah, dude, we, it, it's, it's, yeah, it, it's seriously. Wow. Yeah, it, and all her waters measured two and a half to wow. three liters a day. Wow. In half um, an hour. Okay. Yeah, like every so often she's got it timed out how much she's trying to make sure she and, drinks. And um, make sure I don't drink too much because I, the, my, the most I can go to is five full bottles a day. Yeah, because we don't want to oversaturate her either, right? Well, and the problem with that, people don't realize, like, ketosis is an interesting thing because it can be really great for a short period of time. But over the long time, you can't do it. It'll kill you. And, and It can be really difficult. I know that they're doing, like, her dietitian is treating everything from migraines to cancer. Right. So if you have a reason, like, it, it has benefits. Like oh, yeah. you have to know what you're doing with it, right? You, exactly. If you're not like, there's things that you can do that can make it a very livable sort of thing. But then also like, well, we've got her on. She's on going on year six now. So we, I, I went and I couldn't find any adult keto, uh, keto doctor or dietitian in Canada, wow. so, except for in Toronto, and she couldn't fly because vibration causes seizures certain sounds trigger seizures oh, oh rain water oh. Your teeth. oh rain. yeah rain. oh rain. No. um <clears throat> and driving by fast, fast and, and having shadows moving around wow that's and, really and really affecting lights like for example um flickering lights stop signs um, the green and blue and yellow one. Uh huh. Um, and um, vibration like one vibration is like a motor from a car or an airplane. Cause uh, um, airplanes make a lot of vibration too. <laughs> oh yeah, like the last time I was on an airplane, I seized. Oh. Um. Um. On my way to California. No, on um, Ottawa. We were off to Ottawa. Ottawa. Yeah. Um, and it was such a bad seizure. I almost broke the window and she, because it was um, causing confusion, right? And frontal um, bull behavior. She tried punching out the window. Oh. On her way back, they had the sheriff sit near us in case I needed help. Wow. Because she was like out of control. So many seizures going off from the wow. air pressure. And, and another and light one is like um when set move around or movie theater, because if it's too big of a screen. It's too much of light, but like on tablets or phone, that's a good amount. In a well area, yeah. Sometimes, wow. unless, unless I had a seizure, um, then I shouldn't use um, those kind of lights, um, tablets or phone, because it could go back in a seizure. Books um, can cause seizure. Reading.